Hey, what's up, day walkers and fellow travelers of the night? We are back to talk about some of the recent Moon Knight comics. I am going to get into some spoilers here. So if you haven't read any of the Vengeance of Moon Knight, we are going to talk about the first four issues and how the previous series ended at issue 30, which Jed McKay, the writer, came out and said, you know, he wishes we lived in a reality where books didn't get renumbered, but when sales go a certain way, you know, you got to start thinking about that stuff as a company if the writer wants to continue their story and if the company believes the story needs to continue. And that seems to be what's happening here is that there's a lot of faith in Jed's story, which I'm glad there is because I feel like it's been a really fun Moon Knight story. And fun being a, you know, a, a varying term because uh, sometimes it's fun with action, sometimes it's fun with dialogue, but there is a lot of heart to it as well. And there's been a lot of mystery and intrigue. And it's been kind of cool. So it kind of ties back to the original Moon Knight with like, you know, spy and mystery stuff a little bit, but also takes it in a very modern direction where they're doing this thing called the Midnight Mission, where Moon Knight and Reese and some of these other followers and people that have come along with them, Soldier, all these different characters, Hunter's Moon is a new character as well, and then Tigra, a former love interest who has now come back into Mark's life, they're all working together in this little part of New York protecting it and protecting all travelers of the night, including sometimes vampires uh, in the case of Reese. So uh, it's really neat. It's a really cool storyline, and I like what Jed's doing with it. It's uh, really took me off guard, you know, because I was like, all right, well, I'll see how modern Moon Knight books are because the series, I really like the TV show. And I like some of the comic books, and I've read about the character before, but I never really fully dived into a run outside of the Jeff Lemire run, and that's probably why I like the show so much because it kind of reflected that run so I said, well, let's see what it's like, you know, for Moon Knight when he's more superhero-ish, when it's a little different than maybe what the show portrays or what, you know, Jeff Lemire portrayed. And I got to say, it's it's been a fun ride for sure. Uh, so if you haven't, you know, if you haven't been reading it, please do. It's really, really good. In this issue, number 30, we have The Death of Mark Spector. And this cover I got, it was uh, from, you know, I bought it online, I think. It was uh, one of those unknown comic variants uh, from the company Unknown Comics. Uh, they sell a lot of variant covers. And they had a sale not too long ago because they were moving to a new location. And they were like, hey, we got some issues. If you want to buy, that money will help us move to our new location and it'll help us get rid of some excess uh, inventory. So when I saw that this one was on there, it was like a nod to the, you know, Craven's Last Hunt Spider-Man story. I was like, I got to get it. But in this issue, that's the Big Faith one. And I'm not going to show interior artwork. I don't want to spoil the book overall. I'm going to talk about some spoilers, but I don't want to fully spoil this book. I, I telling you go pick it up um it's out in trade now you know you can get the f all first 30 issues here in trade paperbacks i think they're like run average about 15 dollars a piece in fact i got them all right here this is the midnight mission which we've already reviewed on this channel i'll put a link down below um, i didn't go through this entire series i know some people wanted me to the reason i didn't was because i was going to start a podcast with a friend of mine and we were going to talk about you know moon knight comics modern and past comics and stuff so that's why I have the omnibuses and, and all this other things uh, that they reprinted recently. And we never really got into it. So I've been avoiding re re reviewing the series. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about my thoughts on the overall series. but Because uh, I still don't want to go too in-depth in case me and my friends still you know, uh, do that podcast at some point. But there's Hunter's Moon. He's one of the newest additions. Uh, Steve McNiven over Jay Lee Art, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, so Volume 2, Too Tough to Die has some great, uh, this is like building the story and the mystery of what's going on and who's attacking Mark in, you know, in his life. We get a cool reprint of an annual in here. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think it has the Werewolf by Night, obviously, but the annual is like a Moon Knight versus Werewolf by Night annual, which is cool. But this also has the issue that Tigra and Mark officially make their relationship, I guess, official. <laughs> so yeah, really cool. I, I'm digging that. City of the Dead isn't by Jed McKay, but it is set during this time. And it does introduce Layla from the TV show as the new Scarlet Scarab. And she's uh, it makes her appearance, her comic book appearance, in this. So we still have the original five-issue series with all the Layla covers uh, because we were actually a fan of her on the show. And so seeing her get brought into the comic universe is cool. And I'm wondering where they're going to go with that. Uh, you know, that's not really tying too much into what Jed McKay's doing, but it could be something that, you know, pans out later on, especially with the ending of that book. So yeah, Road to Ruin, this is volume four, and this is uh, where you start seeing who all the actual villains are of the story. Moon Knight was going one way, and turned out there was some twists in the story, and it all leads to this, The Last Days of Moon Knight. Um, I don't know if they reprinted the covers. I wish they would have done that. They did this uh, really cool event this one month where every, well not every, but a lot of comic books that came out that month had a variant cover that featured 
Moon Knight, and it was like a moment of his life. So if you got all like 20 or whatever variant covers, you put them all in order. It was basically like Mark's life flashing before his eyes, or Mark, Stephen, and Jake. It was their life flashing before their eyes leading up to the moment that they die in issue 30 here. So really cool. I like that Marvel did that and got a lot of top talents to make those covers come to life. So that's very, very awesome. So yeah, pick up issue 30 if it, you still see it on the rack. If not, pick up the trades. They're amazing and they're totally worth it. Uh, but then we get another unknown comic variant here, Vengeance of Moon Knight number one. This starts the new storyline, which is what we're going to talk about today, just briefly, where it introduces a new Moon Knight. So now that Mark is gone, and it was a great death, by the way, I thought the, the whole thing was done very, very well, and still leaves you wondering, you know, what's going to happen next, uh, and if he really is gone or not, because it's comics, obviously. But, uh, but this setup, where they dive into, in these four issues, the grief period. So that's what we deal with. Each issue is told from a perspective of a different member of the Midnight Mission. So we start with Reese in issue one, and then we go into Tigra, I believe, in issue two, and then Soldier in issue three, and Hunter's Moon in issue four. And you're kind of seeing the aftermath of Mark's death, what it meaning to them. Um, they have this great moment in here where Ben Grimm from the Fantastic Four shows up. And check out this hollow co or this uh, foil cover, I guess. Um, yeah, really, really cool. I love that. It's, uh, I, I actually had to go to two stores to track this one down. <laughs> this one sold out at my local comic shop, so I had to go find it at another one, which is fine. I, you know, uh, It happens, but um, yeah, really cool. And then this one I also had to track down at another store because mine was sold out. And typically my comic store holds every cover of Moon Knight for me and, to, and asks, you know, for me in blue, and asks if, if we want all the covers. And we basically buy what we can afford that week, and then we, you know, we tell them, hey, Put these back on the shelf in case other super fans are out there too. Um, you know, give them a chance to get it. So, but we typically only buy the covers now that are cover price. So anything that's like five bucks, that's what we buy. Um, rarely will we buy a ten dollar variant after getting uh, issue one and issue two's um, you know higher priced variants. We typically don't go more than that with issues three and onward. So uh, yeah, but, but a very cool issue. And like I said, Ben Grimm shows up, and he has like he he performs the sitting shiva. Um, ritual where he's kind of has everyone showing up and they mourn the loss of their friend and uh, and it's really great because none of the members of the midnight mission are jewish but since ben Grimm is they're like you can take the lead on this one we actually don't know what to do in this case and this is what mark would have wanted as someone who is jewish so doing that with ben Grimm, i thought was fantastic <laughs> no pun intended uh, but it was really emotional too and you get to see kind of through reese this young girl who is a vampire, she's now immortal. She'll forever be like, you know, 19 years old or whatever. And it's her dealing with this responsibility she now has as someone who's growing up too fast, but now is going to be immortal forever. And uh, it's just neat, you know, contrast and dichotomy with the character. And I think Jed does a great job. And the artwork by Capuccio is amazing. I haven't mentioned that enough yet, but you know, like I said, I'm not going to flip through the interior art because I don't want to spoil anything major or give that away, but just amazing artwork, top notch on this whole series. Even though Capuccio doesn't draw every issue of the Jed McKay run, every artist who comes in and fills in till Capuccio comes back is, they're all top notch. I love the book. It looks amazing, consistently amazing. Um, this is a great, uh, great Capullo cover, who I'm a big fan of from Spawn and Batman and everything. So really cool that he's over doing some Marvel stuff now. Ghost Rider, I think, is uh, covers he's doing too. So yeah, very awesome. But I had to get this one. Um, and then we got even the legendary... Frank Miller uh, doing a cover of Moon Knight. How awesome. So, yeah, very cool. I like he's kind of like a, a like a flower almost, like blooming, you know, a new Moon Knight blooming out of the moon. It's kind of neat looking. Um, so, yeah, I, get, I did, did go a little crazy on issue one, getting all the variants. But a lot of these were regular price or, or maybe just like $8, you know, a couple dollars extra. Most of them. Uh, there was a couple that ranged in the, you know, $10 and $15 range, but... I had, to, I had to get them, it was, uh, and I gave away a lot of the digital codes, so I won't be giving away any in this episode, uh, except for, I think, some of the later issues, if they have them in them. Uh, I'll give them out in this episode uh, as we talk about them. But here we get into X, you know, the X-Men variant number issue two of Moon Knight. Um, we have the 97 variant, which we are going to have some episodes of X-Men 97 coming up very, very soon, so uh, stay tuned for that on here on the Seek and Night show. But yeah, just another cool cover. Just It's cool to see Moon Knight in that animation style of what he might have looked like in the X-Men or Spider-Man animated universe um, since we never really got that uh, too much. I think maybe a cameo somewhere. I can't remember. Um, but nothing like definitive. So 
just cool to see that style. And again, this issue is told from the point of view of, uh, actually, I think it's Tigra. And Tigra in this issue is, you know, she's saying, like, the reason Mark isn't coming back this time from the dead is because I, I was in love with him. You know, she's like, anytime I've fallen in love with somebody, they've not been resurrected. Uh, a lot of people get to see their loved ones again. If a superhero dies, they come back. But not me. I haven't had that uh, privilege, I guess. And so uh, so she's mourning in a, in a deep way. And, uh, and it's really told very well. Like I said, um, they're each talking to Mark's therapist uh, to try to, you know, deal with the grief and everything. And now that the sitting Shiva part is over, the team took a couple days off, you know, or took a week off. I think that you're not allowed to work up to seven days, I think, after you sit Shiva. And so they honor that in the book. And the team is like, all right, the Midnight Mission, we can't work, you know, because we're trying to honor Mark. But we do have some friends that will work for us or help us out. So, like, the, some of the Avengers, like Iron Man, Captain America, Wolverine and stuff, they show up and they're like, we'll help out. And we'll watch over the city for the week while you guys mourn. And uh, really, really well done, I thought. Just really, really cool. Um, and this cover I had to get. It's a sideways cover. Usually when I see these, if I have the money, I get them. Because seeing artwork at this perspective sometimes is really awesome. And every once in a while you'll get a cool indie comic that's told completely sideways like this. And, uh, and that's a very interesting challenge for an artist to have to do that. So I always appreciate artists, uh, you know, testing themselves. But this is cool, and it's the new Moon Knight fighting Hunter's Moon, because that's what happened. He shows up, and, you know, this new Moon Knight, and he kicks the crap out of a lot of these guys. <laughs> like, he makes short work of them when he shows up, and, and that's kind of the thing they go through is this new Moon Knight's here. He's very violent. Uh, he doesn't hold his punches back. He's fighting Soldier in this issue. He's fighting Hunter's Moon, Tigra. Um, he's kicking the team's butt and he's taking down villains and he's he's almost kills them. You know, it's like it's pretty brutal. And they're worried that this new Moon Knight is either a new personality from Mark, Stephen and Jake or it's, you know, uh, their body being manipulated or controlled by someone from the afterlife who came back in their body or something like there's so many theories going on and they're trying to figure out what's which one is it, you know, and they need to figure out who this new Moon Knight is before he you know, undoes everything they're trying to work hard for. Um, but also he keeps challenging them. He's stopping villains, but every time they show up to stop him, he fights them back and he wins. And they're just like, okay, we're we're outnumbered by this guy because we don't know who he is. But then we have Hunter's Moon, who is, like I said, a newer character, and he's, he's the other fist of Conchu. You know, Moon Knight's always been the fist of Conchu, but he's been one fist. And Hunter's Moon is now the other fist who's shown up in the past couple years and has challenged Mark, but then has befriended Mark and joined his cause. And so that's who starts to suspect what is really happening with this new Moon Knight. And I really like how he starts to put it together. And he talks about his own training and where he's from and how he became a Fist of Vengeance and the path he took to get here. And that all ties into how he kind of deduces who the new Moon Knight is. So again, just really, really cool, awesome covers. I love this. Uh, that's so violent looking <laughs> it's without being super violent looking you know there's like blood but it's not you know and it's raining blood but it doesn't look as intense for some reason that's really well really well pulled off i like this um, but then it all culminates in this issue here which i do have more covers coming in i just didn't have enough money at the time when i picked this one up so i just grabbed this cover for now and i'll have a couple more coming in and pretty soon um, because we have you know we cut back on comics greatly we're sold a lot of our collection ghost rider collection other things um we have the Vengeance of Moon Knight comic book is going to start delivering in the mail to us. So kind of like what we did with the Venom vlog way back in the beginning, we had Venom comics show up in the mail and we would do a mail call, go out and get it, and then review that issue for you guys. So we're going to do that with Vengeance of Moon Knight. Uh, those issues are going to come in for blue, and I imagine I'm able to just pick it up and read it if I want and review it for you guys. So we will follow the series from here on out. Uh, especially after the reveal of who the new Moon Knight is in this one, which again, I don't want to reveal. I, I, you know, I, I talked about some spoilers, but I don't want to reveal that one. I thought it was a cool twist. They brought back a character that gets forgotten a lot in the Marvel Universe, and it makes sense. Like the way they tie it in with Hunter's Moon's background and how he knows about certain fighting styles and how he uses that to deduce who the new Moon Knight is and who the actual new Moon Knight is. It's like it all kind of makes sense, and it's, uh, it's really neat. And I'm curious to see where they're going to go from here with it. But yeah, I had to get this cover. When I had to pick one, I was like, I'll go with the 90s cover for now. But there are more covers coming in soon. But boom, there's some digital codes for you guys. Uh, hopefully I had another one go up earlier. If not, though, at least for issue four, I have a code for that one that I know will work. So check it out. Read Vengeance of Moon Knight. 
Uh, first person to put that code in will get the comic. I'd love to hear your review down below of it. Try to avoid the spoiler, the big spoiler, if you can. Um, but, you know, for those watching this later on, depending on how, you know, as time passes, people will get more and more comfortable talking about spoilers in the comments. So I would say avoid the, com you know, comment section if you don't want any spoilers for who the new Moon Knight is. And I would recommend picking this up. And I believe the trade will be coming out soon, like in the next month or two, that'll have the first four issues of this run. So Marvel's trying to stay close with it so people can get the trade and jump right back into the single issues if need be. So uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. I've been buying this book in single issue, um, multiple covers sometimes. It's caused me to drop other Marvel comics and, and other DC comics too, because when I like something, especially when I like it and Blue likes it, it's, I was like, all right, well, then this is where our money's going to go. Like, we want to support this. We want to support an awesome run on a cool character like Moon Knight. And that's what we've been getting. So Vengeance of Moon Knight, it's out now. Pick it up from your local comic shop. Um, and let me know what you think of it down below. If you've been reading it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And we'll talk more down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.